Hello, everyone. My name is Lucas de Marchi, and I'm with Full Gauge Controls USA. And we are live from Miami, Florida. First of all, I would like to thank you very much for being here with us tonight, uh, today. Uh, we really appreciate you're here. For, th for those of you who were here last week, uh, we appreciate your coming back. We appreciate uh, your continued support. And uh, last week we talked about installation of a medium temp digital refrigeration controller. And this week our live webinar is about installation for, and configuration of a low temp freezer digital controller. Before we get started, a uh, couple of things that I would like to uh, share with you today. Um, first of all, for e uh, those of you who have the FG Finder app, please turn on your notification. FG Finder app is an app uh, developed by Full Gauge Controls where you have all your product manuals, installation videos, selection guide, and other support materials. So if you haven't installed on your phone, please go ahead and install. That's available on the iOS store and on Android store. And for those of you who have installed the FG Finder app, please activate your notifications. So that way you, you will stay uh, tuned on our product release, new product launches, new support materials, and... Um, training opportunities, and more. So as I mentioned, we are live. I can see we have a lot of comments already. So please go ahead and uh, share your comments, share all your questions. We do have a moderator that will be answering your questions in real time. And uh, of course, I will also be bringing some of those questions for our live discussion in here. So please go ahead, use the chat feature on YouTube to send out your questions, uh, comments, or anything that uh, you would like to share with us. Um, so another thing I wanted to ask you is if you like our uh, live training initiative, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We also have a Facebook, LinkedIn page. So go ahead and subscribe to all our social media to see the latest uh, trainings and the latest product content that we are constantly updating throughout our social media. Uh, um, lastly, uh, we're gonna have a very special guest uh, joining our training today. Um, you probably have seen some of his videos on YouTube, but uh, we'll be sharing some of his story today with you. So please stay tuned to the end of the video for our special guest. And uh, once again, thank you very much for joining our live training on how to install a digital freezer controller, a low temp digital freezer controller. And again, send out all your questions and comments and we'll be happy to assist you. So let's get So again, this is our second live training event and we are talking about refrigeration controllers. Last week, we talked about a medium temp controller. And this week, in the module two, we're going to be talking about installation and configuration of a low temp freezer controller. Just to remind you other solutions and other applications that we can be helping you out, full gauge also have temperature controllers for reaching, walking, upright, chest, and any other cooler or freezer application. So, and not only limited to those applications, any application that requires precise temperature control, we're gonna have a solution that can help you. 
Uh, we also have a line that combines temperature and humidity controllers that are ideal for uh, ripening rooms, uh, computer data centers, cigar humidors, uh, wine cellars, any, any other application that requires precise temperature and humidity control. We also have a line of dedicated pressure-based control controls from this very simple single-stage pressure-based control to the more advanced multi-stage rack controller. We also have electrical power controllers, controllers that have been designed to monitor and control uh, voltage. In addition to that, we have a line of multi-stage temperature-based controllers that are ideal for water chiller, process chiller applications, and a variety of air conditioning applications. And lastly, but not least, we also have a line of dedicated solar heating controls. But again, today we're going to be talking about a low temp freezer controllers. So the applications we will be covering today will include, but not be limited to, reaching freezers, under counter freezers, ice cream carts, and any other type of low temp storage equipment, freezer equipment. You can also include bottle coolers under that category. Display freezers. Walking freezers. So again, those are the applications that we're going to be reviewing installation and configuration guidelines. But not only those applications, but you can also use the knowledge you will acquire during this presentation to any low temp freezer equipment. So we're going to be looking on how to install a digital freezer controller in those applications. And for that, we have selected the full gauge TC900E2HP. The full gauge TC900E2HP has been designed for medium as well as a low temp application. So you can use for coolers as well as for freezers. So the idea with control and what are you gonna learn today is how to use this control to retrofit or retrofit of existing mechanical installations. So we're gonna be looking at how to install this control to replace a mechanical thermostat, a defrost timer, a fan termination switch, as well as the temperature uh, indicator, the thermometer. So with this digital, temperature control, you can actually replace your thermostat, defrost timer, and thermometer, all with one single digital control. And you can also, you will also learn how to use this control as a replacement of any OEM freezer controller, virtually any OEM freezer controller. So again, applications we're going to be reviewing today will include, but not be not limited to walking, reaching, upright, and any type of freezer low temp equipment. So just to show share with you how the packaging, this is for North America market, for USA. So in USA, we have partnered with Renko Robert Shaw for the distribution of full gauge controllers in the aftermarket. So products are available uh, throughout major refrigeration wholesalers throughout the country. And that's how the package look like. That's how you're gonna see the full gauge Renko controllers 
in these stores. And again, today we're going to be looking at the TC900 designed for medium temp as well as low temp refrigeration applications. So we're going to be starting from installation and mounting options. Mounting. The controller is mounted in a 2.8 by 1.14 inch cutout. That's the same dimension and cutout as virtually any other digital refrigeration controller. So again, this instruction can also be used to replace existing OEM refrigeration controllers. If you don't, if you don't have that exact cutout, we do have other accessories that can support your mounting procedures. So we have a stainless steel flat mounting plate, as well as a plastic enclosure. And we do have other mounting accessories that can make your installation easier and quicker. In addition to that, some of our customers also like to mount those controllers in an electrical control panel. So those are just examples of electrical control control panel that can be used to host, to house that full gauge TC900 controller. This is widely used in walk-in applications, in fact. So let's review the basic refrigeration cycle and where the controller will sit in. So the basic refrigeration cycle comprises of a compressor, a condenser, an expansion device, and an evaporator. So in this case, the digital controller will be controlling the compressor and the evaporator fan and the defrost. So we will be automating the cooling cycle as well as the defrost cycle. That's the main application for a digital freezer controller to automate the cooling cycle and the defrost cycle all in one. So again, for those applications, we have selected the TC900E2HP, which features three outputs of control, allowing you to control compressor, evaporator fans, and defrost. The controller is equipped with two sensors. One sensor for room temperature that will be calling for compressor on and off, and the other sensor for the evaporator coil. That one will be controlling the defrost cycle. Other salient features of the TC900E2HP includes two digital inputs that can be used as a third sensor or door switch, built-in audible alarm that can sound high, low temperature alarms, door opening, and other unlike events. We also have loaded an option which is commonly called uh, adaptive defrost, which performs a defrost cycle only when needed, increasing performance of the refrigeration equipment and optimizing energy spending. The controller is also loaded with three layers of set point, normal operating set point, economy set point that will reduce compressor cycles during nighttime, for example, and the fast freezing set point that is used for when you are storing products inside of the room and you want to quickly chill down the product temperatures. So we're going to be first looking at how to wire the freezer controller inside of a freezer application. So what we have in here, I would like you to first to the left, to the wiring diagram on your left. It's actually on my left. I'm not too sure whether it's on your left, on your right. But 
I'm actually pointing out this wiring diagram. So please, let's pay attention to this wiring diagram first. What we have in here, and one thing that I, I would like to you is that the TC900, most of other full gauge, they are dual gauge. So that, that means you can actually put a controller in or to 20. So you have a dual voltage controller with it. In this case in here, we are powering the controller in 220. We have a hot wire, we have a neutral on terminal nine, and we have the hot wire going into terminal 11. That's providing 220 volts to the digital controller. Now, I would like you to take a look at terminal 12 and terminal 16. These are the common. That means that uh, once you feed power to those terminals, you're actually energizing the relay circuit. And the nice feature, the nice thing about having an independent common for the relay circuit is that power the controller in 110 and the compressor to it, or the controller to 30 and run a 12 volt solar through the output. So that's having an independent common. So once we have this, let's move to the next wiring diagram where I would like to share with you how Impressor, your uh, and bus. So here we have 220 the controller to terminal 9 and 11. And we are feeding another hotline to terminal 12 in order to energize the defrost circuit. So what will happen on terminal? I defrost my heating element. So hot wire is going in on terminal 12. And once the relay close, it brings that hot line to the electrical heater, which is connected on the neutral line on the other end. Next to the heater, we're gonna have the compressor connection on terminal 15. So again, we are feeding power through terminal 16 in order to energize the relay circuit for compressor and fans. So that way you're gonna bring, you're gonna power your compressor through the, you're gonna have your hotline coming out of terminal 15 towards your compressor, and you're gonna connect the other leg to the neutral. In that way, we are hooking up a 230 compressor on it. And lastly, we have the connection for the, which will have coming out from terminal 17, and your evaporator fan to the neutral on the other level. That way we are actually compressor, electric, and evaporator fans with it. It's about the wiring, about the electrical wiring. Anything that uh, we can help you with, please don't hesitate to ask. Do one thing. I'll be sharing this with you. That's our tech support number and our tech support email. So any question you have that uh, maybe we're not going to be able to answer today, you can always reach out to us through that uh, those uh, phone and email address. So. Here's we we have a good question. I actually want to bring that up so we can all look at that. Can you run both 115 and 220 at the same time? Well, that all depends what's the system design. What I'm saying here is that we have two independent circuit for the relays, which are independent from the controller power supply. So as far as the controller, yes, you can. You can power the controller in 110 and run a 230 compressor through it because my compressor circuit is independent from the power supply circuit. 
That's the nice flexibility that the full gauge product line offers to you. So let's move ahead. Sensor, sensor installation. That's also a very critical step of your installation of your digital freezer controller. So here we show you an example of the S1, the room sensor. And the S1, the room sensor, will be controlling the compressor on and off. So the ideal position for the room sensor is on the air return. And uh, why do you place on the air return? Because that's normally the warmest part of your uh, walk-in cool freezer or the warmest part of your uh, cooling compartment. So you want to actually control the compressor based on that. So that way you certify that your uh, cooling compartment uh, has a uniform temperature within. So again, ideal position for the room sensor S1 is on the air return of your evaporator. Now, the freezer controller, the digital freezer controller includes two sensors. One that will be controlling the compressor on and off cycle, the cooling cycle, and the other one that will be controlling the defrost cycle. And that's for an optimum defrost cycle and for energy efficiency. So where is the best position to install the defrost sensor? You're gonna install the defrost sensor on the last forming, uh, on the last ice formation spot of your coil. Some of the coil, the evaporator coil manufacturers, they actually suggest a position to install the uh, temperature sensors. So what I recommend you, first check your, uh, evaporator manufacturer to see if they recommend a position within that specific evaporator. That's normally within the evaporator instructions. If it's not there, I would recommend you to watch for the last forming spot of ice. And that's where you wanna start the sensor. So that way you are certifying that the, your coil is fully clean before you enter the refrigeration cycle again. Now let's look at operation. So before we enter in the operation, I would like to share with you the basic freezer cycle. So the basic freezer cycle The basic freezer cycle starts from the fan delay. So you first have your fan delay cycle. So what, what that happens, the compressor kicks in first and you cool down the evaporator coil before you start the fan. So that way you certify that you will not be sending warm air inside of the unit. So you first, your compressor kicks in, temperature at the coil cools down a little bit and then the fan starts. And that's when you have your cooling cycle. So the cooling cycle, it's the on air, off of the compressor. And the cooling cycle works based on the set point, which is the cutout temperature, is the temperature that the compressor will deactivate, will switch off, and on the cutting temperature, which is your differential. That's the temperature that the compressor will be activated, the temperature that the compre compressor will be switched on. After that, we have the pre-defrost cycle. Pre-defrost cycle, it's a cycle where only the evaporator fan is on. So that way you can make use of that residual energy left from the refrigerant. And then you enter the actual defrost cycle where you're gonna have your compressor and fans off and your electric heater on. After the defrost cycle is completed, we have the draining cycles, the draining cycle, where all the outputs will remain off. 
And after that, we come back to defend delay cycle. So we delay defend, bring compressor on, cool down the coil a little bit, and then start on the cooling cycle. That's the basic refrigeration cycle. One nice feature on the TC900 is the possibility to view the current cycle. The way you can view the current cycle is just by pushing the lower button. Whenever you're looking at the temperature display, whenever it is displayed, the controller is displaying the temperature, you just push the lower button and that's gonna display the current refrigeration, the current cycle. So the controller will display what's the temperature on sensor two on your coil temperature. What's the current cycle? Is it under cooling? Is it under defrost? How long that has been under the same cycle? So you have that nice feedback right at the controller screen. So let's first look into the cooling cycle. How do we set the cooling cycle? Again, the cooling cycle works between a set point and differential. The differential is the temperature that the system will turn on. So whenever the temperature reaches the differential, compressor starts and the temperature starts to drop. When the temperature drops to the set point, the compressor cuts out. So that's how the cooling cycle works. It's a cut in and cut out based on the set point and differential. So the first thing I would recommend you to do is to set your set point. And in order to set the set point, it's quite easy. What are you going to do? You're just going to press the set button two seconds, and you keep pushing, pressing the set button for two seconds, and that's going to take you to the set point menu. There you can upper or lower your set point as per your application. Remember, different applications will require different set points. You might, you might need one set point for your ice cream uh, freezer and a different set point for the protein freezer. So remember of checking with the uh, cabinet manufacturer, with the equipment manufacturer, or with the customer, what's the desired temperature for that application? Because sometimes the equipment manufacturer designs an equipment for one purpose, but the customer, the end customer, the end user ends up using that same equipment for a different purpose. So make sure you check with the equipment manufacturer as well as chat with your customer, see what's the ideal temperature for them. So once the set point is adjusted, we now gonna adjust the differential and the defrost settings. So in order to change those settings, we're going to have to access the control parameters. And here I would like to show you how to access the control parameters. That's one of the nice things about full gauge controllers is that they are so user friendly to use. They're very, very simple to program and set up. And uh, we have a nice table based programming in numerical order, which is a very straightforward format of setting up those controls. So. In order to access the parameters, you're going to first push up and down button simultaneously. So you're going to push up and down simultaneously, and that's going to take you to the functions menu. And then F01, that's the function one. Once, once you see F01, you're going to press set. And then you're going to use up or down buttons in order to select the code 123, 123. That's the password to access the advanced, the control parameters. So once you see 123, once you select 123, you just press set to confirm. And there you can change all your other settings, including your differential, your defrost settings, and your fan settings. So now I'm going to be showing you what are the basic settings that have to be changed, that often have to be changed on a freezer application. So 
going back a little bit, we would first change the F02. That's the differential. So remember to change the differential according to the application. So normally differentials will be set from three to five, seven degrees. So that's normally what I've seen out there in the field. After you adjust the differential, we're gonna move into the defrost settings. First defrost setting, so at this application, commonly you commonly find electric defrost starting at time initiation, temperature termination defrost. And that's the example we are bringing to you. So we're gonna first be setting the F08, the cooling time. That's your interval between defrost. That's your defrost frequency. How often you would need the defrost. The defrost, the default setting is 240 minutes. That means you have one defrost cycle every four hours. But again, you can adjust that from 240 to 360 in order to have the six hours defrost, or you can run um, eight hours defrost, you adjust that according to the application. Next to it, you have a temperature F13, temperature to terminate the defrost. Ideally, you want to terminate the defrost based on the coil temperature for an optimum defrost cycle. That way you're saving electricity and optimizing the compressor running time on and off cycles. So you're going to set that defrost termination temperature according to the application. In addition to that, you have a safety function, which is F14. It's a maximum defrost duration. In an event that the, the defrost cannot kick off based on temperature, you have a maximum defrost duration for safety reasons. And there you can set your maximum defrost time. So those are the basic defrost settings. You want to change other defrost settings that are available within the control will include F16 defrost time type. The TC900 can actually perform electric or hot gas defrost, as well as off-cycle natural defrost. But mainly, customers will use the TC900 to control either electrical or hot gas defrost cycles. And Again, we have an adaptive defrost option with it. So you would set on, if you wanna make use of that adaptive defrost cycle for an optimum defrost control, you would change that F39 to start the defrost based on the temperature. So now the controller would monitor the coil temp and initiate the defrost based on that. And for that particular application, we have the F41, which is temperature at the defrost to uh, temperature at the evaporator to start defrost. That's basically a defrost validation time. So this will prevent false defrost calls. So the temperature plus the time is the algorithm we have for adaptive defrost. Uh, and we have a time to conform low temp at the evaporator to start defrost. Some of the fan, remember that the TC900 also include a dedicated fan relay output. Here I would just like to highlight what are the main fan control options we have. Those are not often changed, but are there if you wanna find the fine tune for your application and increase energy efficiency. So the most common and the settings that I would like to highlight for fan control are F19, evaporator temperature for fan return after draining. So this is a, actually a nice feature. You can actually set a minimum coil temperature for fan return after defrost. You normally have the fan delay, which is a time-based function. So let's say if you set your fan delay for two minutes, is that two minutes long enough to cool down your evaporator coil before you bring the fan on? We know that. So that's why ideally you would bring the fan back after defrost based on the coil temperature. So that's what the F19 
offers you. It, to, it provides you the option of starting the fan after defrost based on the oil temperature. And you have the F20, which is a maximum time for fan return after draining. That's the common fan delay option. Your F21 provides you the option to set the fan while your compressor is off. And you can actually set the fan to be on with compressor on and be on with compressor off or the fan to go off with compressor off. Or you also have the option to cycle the fan on and off while your compressor is off. So that way you can provide an even temperature within the cabinet. So that fan cycling option while your compressor is off is also used to improve energy savings. You also have the possibility to set a fan uh, evaporator temperature to stop the fan for safety reasons. If anything goes wrong, your coil starts to warm up. You want to stop the fans preventing from that hot air to flow inside of the compartment of the temperature controlled compartment. Uh, and the F35 and F36 allows you to set the minimum fan on and fan off cycle in case you have set your fan to cycle while, over, while compressor is off. Controller is also equipped with a digital input. So I have highlighted, uh, you have actually 13 options of setting up this digital input. You can use for different purpose. I have actually highlighted the most common options for the digital inputs, which are door alarm, to connect a door switch through the controller digital input. And now you can monitor when the door is open, closed, how long the door is open for, and take actions if the door is left open. In addition to that, we have the option to set up a sensor number three, a ST. And that sensor can be used to control the condenser temperature or when you have a twin evap system. Sometimes you have those large walk-in freezers which have two evaporators on it. With the TC900E2HP, you actually have the possibility of running those defrost cycles independently. That way, you're going to run sensor 2 in one coil and the sensor 3 in the second coil. And you're going to use the fan output to control the second electric resistance on the second coil. Another option for the uh, third probe, the third temperature sensor, is to control the condenser temperature. For example, if the temperature at the condenser goes up, you know there is a problem and an action has to be taken. Maybe the filter is dirty, maybe there is a low pressure, a low refrigerant, you will have an alert that something is wrong. Other so here are some digital input related features. For example, once you connect a digital input to a door sensor, you have the possibility to enter economy mode based on time for closed door. So if the door is closed, let's say during the night time, when people close the door, you can actually increase your set point reducing compressor running time and possibly defrost cycles if you're using the adaptive defrost cycle. So the ability of having controlling the door, you can actually trigger different actions such as economy set point or an instant defrost. For example, if the door is left open, you might want to perform an instant defrost because you know that the coil will be built up with ice. Other possibilities when you're using the digital input is to shut down the fan when the door is open, preventing that uh, hot air to create build up ice and, and short, shorten your defrost cycle. F43 allows you to set a time of open door to shut down the control outputs that for safety reasons. So, for example, if the door is left open for too long, the controller can cut off power from all the outputs, preventing any major problem. 
and as well as give an open door alarm. So those are some of the functions that are available with your TC900 if you're using the defrost, the digital input as a door switch. Lastly, I would like to review the alarm functions. So the TC900E2HP includes a high temp and low temp alarm, ambient alarm, temperature alarm, as well as an alarm delay, which prevents false alarm calls. And when you're using the third sensor as a condenser temperature control, you also have the condenser temperature alarm. So here is a question uh, that um, I would like to share with you guys. Uh, Kurt Fisher, thank you very much for being here with us and thank you for your question. Can you do temperature averaging if you're using two coil sensors? Yes, you have that possibility. You can actually set averaging temperature when you're using the two sensors, sensor two and sensor three. There is this possibility available within the TC900. So moving towards the end, uh, one nice feature uh, Full Gauge and Renko provides to you is the compatibility with the EasyProg. EasyProg is a programming device which actually hosts up to nine independent setting options. So within the EasyProg, you can have one programming for your walk-in freezer, one programming for your medium temp upright cooler, one programming for the uh, warmer case. You can have up to nine independent programmings uploaded to the key. So whenever you go to the job, you just plug in the key and download your desired program into the controller. That will prevent, that will, uh, prevent manually programming will actually skip the manual programming within your controller. So this is streamlines configuration, makes configuration quickly and easy. And again, I would like to invite you to download the FG Finder app, which provides you uh, in the palm of your hand all the product manuals, where to buy uh, electronic expansion valve selection videos and more. So please download this app and activate the notifications. And now I would like to have a chat. I'll bring in our guest for tonight. And uh, let me bring him in. What's up, Lucas? How are you? Hey, Matt. How are you? Are you Thank, you. Okay? Thank you very much for your call today. Yes, right, we can see you. you. Thank you very much for joining us for those of you who are watching, we have Matt Micah live from Warped Perception. You probably have seen some of his videos on YouTube. He has over so. 5,000 subscribers, right? And, and some very innovative videos. But uh, Matt, again, thank you very much for being here with us tonight. We really appreciate you here sharing your experience with the team. Thanks for having uh, me. Before we get started on our chat, I have one question, one nice question here that uh, I would like to share with our audience so we can all see. Uh, immigration Freedom has asked, uh, is it R290 compatible? Yes, the TC900 is 290 compatible. It's actually compatible with all flammable refrigerants, including R290 and R600. So you're good to go. And so for yeah. those who, who don't know you, tell us a little bit about your background. Um, share with us uh, what do you do and... Uh, and well, funny enough, full gauge, full gauge was one of the first projects that uh, I ever did for YouTube, funny enough, right here. 
<laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I do a lot of things. I'm, I'm basically an engineer by trade and, uh, you know, I'm a filmmaker. So I, I tinker with a lot of stuff. And like I said, the full gauge controls, they were one of the first uh, things that I messed with and the first YouTube videos that I had ever done. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting the way that played out. But, yeah, I mean, and I think those, uh, it's pretty for awesome. Those that, uh, for those that only know you from the YouTube, uh, in fact, you have been the HVAC refrigeration industry for a while, right? How long have you been yeah. in the HVAC refrigeration industry? Yeah, I've been I've been doing uh, refrigeration. Oh man, about twenty years, about twenty years total. Twenty years. And how long have you been using full gauge controllers for your projects? Well, I would like to I would like to like take credit as one of the first people that ever brought this to the United States. I think I was using them. I, I mean, as far as I know, as far as I know, I mean, could prove me wrong. I mean, you could Google it maybe, but as far as I know, I was the first one to ever bring these to the United States, because I remember when I first brought these, originally they were all still in Celsius and centigrade, and it just, yeah, that was one of the first things that full gauge changed was uh, made them into Fahrenheit. So, I mean, that was that was like 10 years ago, maybe 11 years ago. I'm guessing something like yeah. that. Probably more, probably more. And uh, yeah, what I mean, do you like most of the products? You know, I think I think the one the one thing that I like and the one thing that I identified uh, really early on, which is, is what caught my eye and caught my interest and my dedication is because they're so simple to program. Like every single other digital controller that I tried to use, because I was always pioneering and trying to maverick and in, in technologies just to save, you know, save time, especially save time, save my technicians time and obviously make more money, you know, pound for pound per minute, make more money. It's just the, the, the ease of programming. And that's that still holds true to this day. Originally, that's why I, you know, that's really what caught my eye. And it still still holds true to this day. Like I've used, uh, you know, I've used full gauge. I'm not doing obviously as much refrigeration as I used to because I'm basically, you know, filming all the time. Uh, but I do a job here and there. And, uh, you know, I, I see a lot of frustration with the customers when they use the competitor's project. And I'm not trying to like push full gauge like or, you know, endorse, but I've seen so much customer frustration when it comes to using the competitor's controllers. I mean, they're so frustrated trying to like program that thing. It's almost funny to watch them. You know, they just like want to smash it with a hammer. And and that's and usually I always tell them like, hey man, try out this controller, a full gauge controller, see if you like it. If you don't like it, you don't have to pay me. That's kind of kind of how I started getting into it. And uh, I mean, they they were always in love with the controller, the same as I was, and it was always the ease of programming. And the flexibility of the controller. So nice, wonderful. That's nice to hear. And uh, any project that uh, you have done with Full Gauge that you would like to share with our audience today? Oh man, let's see. Uh, I don't know. I, I've honestly, I've honestly adapted just about any heating, cooling, refrigeration device in some way to a full gauge controller. I, I think the weirdest thing, the weirdest thing I think I've ever done with the full gauge controller is take one of those ventless heaters that use like this, uh, you know, pressure based thermostat and switch it over to a full gauge just to get better control of the temperature. And uh, that was probably the weirdest thing that or like an electric heater. I use a refrigeration controller to run like a big industrial electric heater. I'm trying to think what else I've done that's off the wall. Uh, that's about it. I mean, but basically I'm using a refrigeration controller and the amount of flexibility that it gives you to run something that is completely not even related to what these controllers are, are targeted towards. Well, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. Very interesting that uh, you can share that flexibility. So you can actually take one application a specific controller and apply to a variety of other applications. And uh, well, that's very interesting and very helpful for those who are watching. And I also know that uh, you have also experienced remote monitoring with full gauge. You have installed Citrad software in many of your customers. And um, I guess you get a positive feedback from them. Yeah, you know, I remember I did, you know, I did some of the very first installations and uh, I basically had to pull teeth 
to get some of these restaurants to let me do these demo installations. Uh, those were hard times. But funny enough, you know, interesting story. You know, I've been out of the refrigeration cell for, you know, I mean, I'm still doing jobs here and there. But like I said, my, my schedule just doesn't allow. But, um, you know, two years ago, I got a call from a, a customer, a steakhouse here in Chicago. And uh, the installation, the remote monitoring installation, I think I installed that. Let me think about that. Probably in 2012, 2013. And I went back there two years ago. And no joke, the thing was still operating. They were still using it. I never got a call about it. I was like, really? You guys are still using this thing? It was just a demo install for one of the shows. And uh, they were still using it. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's really reliable and, and robust. So that, that's what we put our emphasis on. So, uh, Matt, uh, we know that uh, you've been putting a lot of A14 video production. Where that has came from? Uh, well, that's when I started when I was a kid. You know, when I was like six or seven, that's where I started. And then I just got into the refrigeration stuff because uh, I was easy for me. You know, I was young. People asked me to fix stuff. I walked in, fixed it, charged them, made money, walked out with a handful of cash. So uh, that's what I went for. And then later on, I came back to film and TV and stuff like that, which, which you know, it's what I, I'm really good at. So luckily, you know, I have options. That's nice. That's nice. So you went through a lot. You, 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 you changed your career uh, at some points. And uh, you, you, you're always trying to adapt to the new uh, times and the new circumstances. So is there anything that uh, you would like to share with our audience? Uh, we are going through a very challenging time. For those who are watching us uh, and are wondering the uh, effects of uh, COVID-19, is there anything you would like to share? Man, yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, who knows how we're going to come out of this, but at the end, I think we're going to have a lot of catch-up to do. Once this whole stay at home order, I know it's not all the states, but it's most of the big cities. I mean, the only thing I could think of is once we come out of this and everything gets back online, I know it's going to probably happen slowly, but whoever's working out there, refrigeration or AC or any of those technicians, they're going to have to work a lot to catch up for all this time off that they just had. I mean, other than that, I can't think of too much else to say about that situation. I mean, there's nothing we can do. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But we gotta, we gotta think positive and and have a plan to move forward. So, well, Matt, uh, I would like to thank you very much. We're coming to an end. We've been for about an hour now. We really appreciate you joining today, and we really appreciate your business. You've been here uh, with Full Gauge or Full Gauge, and uh, we are here to support you in all your upcoming projects. You can always count on us for uh, our innovative products and our uh, good aftermarket support. So uh, we really appreciate your business. appreciate uh, you being here with us. And one thing that uh, I started uh, last week, and uh, last week I actually uh, shared a thought uh, with audience and uh, this week I actually selected another thought that uh, I could share with uh, you guys and and you know because we gotta think in a good perspective forward and we will soon be over and and we'll be back in business so uh, the thought that I selected for today is the pessim pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity and the optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. So let's think about that. And that's what I have for you guys this week. Thank you again. Thank you for all of you that uh, came to watch our live today. And we're going to have an another live next week, Wednesday. Another thing that I wanted to ask you about, if you can leave a comment uh, in here in the video, so, do you think that the time for our live is right? Uh, is this a good time for you to join our live? 6 p.m., 7 p.m. Eastern time. Is this the ideal time for you to join the live? Please leave our comment in here and let us understand if this is a good time for you. So again, 
Thank you all very much for being here. Thank you, Matt, again, and hope to see you next week. Bye. Thanks, Luke. Thank you to Thanks check. for having me. Okay, take care. Thanks. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here and look forward to see you again next week live at Full Gauge YouTube channel. Have you all a good rest of the week.